new technology hub uh, here uh, in Surfers. Uh, we're very excited about this investment. But before I start, I just want to acknowledge where we are. Um, we're on the lands of the Ugumba people today, and I want to acknowledge um, and pay my respects to elders um, past, present, and emerging. Uh, we're very excited about this investment that we have here um, to put a technology hub in Queensland where we've been for a very long time, uh, initially as the Bank of New South Wales and now customers and over 1,800 staff in the state. Um, we're very proud of the work we do in the community through the Westpac helicopters and particularly excited in the context of this opening, what we're doing with the universities here in Queensland that are providing the amazing technical talent that we hope to harness for our engineering hub as we grow it in this um, part of the world. So um, very pleased to be here, very pleased to be opening, and particularly wanted to um, welcome the Honorable Cameron Dick, uh, who's uh, come to open it officially for us, and I'll hand to him for some remarks. Thanks, Thanks Chris. Great to be back on the Gold Coast, and great to be at this site of 200 amazing new jobs at Westpac's new IT and tech hub here on the Gold Coast. Um, the last two years, I think, have demonstrated to all Queenslanders the need to expand, but also to diversify our economy. Uh, and that's what we're seeing from this commitment by Westpac today. Westpac first came to Queensland in 1850. That was before Queensland was even Qu Queensland. We know on the 6th of June 1859 when the letters patent were issued and our constitution was issued, that was uh, our Independence Day and look, things have looked up ever since. But Westpac has been a partner with Queensland now for 172 years. That's an amazing commitment. And now we see an ongoing commitment through this new IT and tech hub on the Gold Coast. Um, I think the world recognises the Gold Coast as a great place for a holiday. Uh, as a great place to visit, uh, as a tourist mecca. But the Gold Coast is much more than that. The Gold Coast is much more than the glitter that it offers for a great holiday, a great experience with your family and your friends. Uh, and that's what we're seeing today through this investment. We're seeing the diversification of the Gold Coast economy happening before our eyes. Um, at the heart of a Westpac's investment decision are two things. The unprecedented lifestyle that the Gold Coast and Queensland offers to uh, professional and working people. Uh, and it's also uh, an endorsement of the great talent that we have in our state. Just talking to Chris uh, about their engagement with universities here in Queensland, it demonstrates again the talent of our people and the talent that's coming out of universities. And now they've got a place to, to work, to use what they've learned at university and to put it into practice in this new IT and tech hub. Jobs for software engineers, technologists and data specialists who can go for a surf in the morning uh, and they can fight over the best surf bank on the Gold Coast. Uh, but now we've got a silicon bank here uh, at Surfers Paradise, a silicon bank, not, our, not a silicon valley but a silicon bank uh, where we can uh, those workers, those uh, professionals uh, can uh, exercise their skills in a dynamic working environment that Westpac offers. And we're seeing the benefit of our strong health response to COVID uh, in the economic recovery we're seeing in Queensland. And that's demonstrated here on the Gold Coast. You just have to look at the numbers to see uh, why Westpac's made this sort of investment decision in this community. Um, uh, the Gold Coast has posted the strongest employment growth of any region in Queensland over the last 12 months. 39,000 jobs added here on the Gold Coast. In fact, over the last 12 months, one in four jobs created in Queensland have been created on the Gold Coast. Uh, the unemployment rate here on the Gold Coast has dropped three percentage points over the last 12 months. That's during the pandemic. The unemployment rate dropped 3%, now standing at 4.5% here on the coast. Um, and of course, the youth unemployment rate has dropped significantly. It's dropped 4% since the pandemic started. Uh, it was 4% higher pre-COVID. Uh, and so that's another great indicator that we're creating jobs for young people on the Gold Coast as well. When it comes to housing and dwelling approvals, they've increased by 36% 
over the last 12 months, more than 9,700 dwellings built over two years on the Gold Coast, and accommodation occupancy rates we know are going up. And that's a great story for the tourism industry. We know how difficult uh, the business and operating environment has been for tourist operators over the last two years, but it's very pleasing that uh, accommodation occupancy is up 13% uh, over the last, uh, the equivalent week last year, so a 13% increase, uh, with strong bookings during Easter, uh, a great Easter holiday period, a great period of long weekends here on the coast, and we know that the tourist and holiday bookings for the upcoming June-July holidays are very positive as well. So today I want to thank Westpac for their investment in their future in our state. This is an important investment in Queensland. It's exactly the sort of high quality, high tech, high value, full time jobs that we're looking for in Queensland. Uh, this is a significant investment. Uh, they'll take their employment uh, footprint here in Queensland from, as Chris has said, 1,600 to another 200 jobs on top of that. Uh, and that's so exciting for our state. So thanks to Chris and the Westpac team for this investment in Queensland. It just shows Queensland is the place to be, the Gold Coast is the place to be, and the future is looking very bright for our Sunshine State. So happy to take questions uh, for, on this investment decision from Chris and myself, uh, and then happy to take any other questions you have this morning. Any questions? Yeah, Chris. Yes, Chris. Uh, how many Yeah, so this one, we, the initial aim is to put 200 engineers and technologists into this hub, and uh, the first batch are already here, but that's right here in this location. Pretty, pretty crowded, 200 people. I'm assuming, is it all on this level here? Or no, so, so Westpac, what we learned during the, the pandemic is hybrid working is really the preferred style of how our staff need to work, and we as a company have committed to hybrid working. It means people can shape their own lives, they can control how they want to run their personal life, and as long as they produce what we need them to produce, uh, we're happy for them to, work, to arrange how they want to work themselves. This is a touchdown space where they can come together, they can uh, create culture, they can solve problems, they can uh, load their projects and uh, interact with each other, and we'll grow this over time. So right now the first batch is in. We anticipate that this uh, location will both grow physically and in terms of numbers. We've spoken to a couple of larger businesses recently, in recent weeks, and a lot of them are actually struggling to, to get employees actually to fill those positions. So is that a challenge you expect to face, and sort of how do you tackle that? Well, we've been very fortunate that we've had amazing uh, response. So we have, for the positions we've already put out, we've had a response well in excess of the positions uh, we have. But we recognize that, it is that there is a war for talent out there. And part of why we think this is a good location for us is it brings the best of hybrid working, great lifestyle, closer to technical talent that wants to be in this part of the world. And we, we are very proud of our relationships with the University of Queensland and the University of Queensland of Technology. And that is, means there's a talent pool that we can do. You no longer have to travel south to have a career or go overseas to have a career. You can stay right here on the Gold Coast and work with us. And just speaking on that travel, you, you know, we understand it's no great secret that there's been a, a fairly big migration from those southern states up here. I mean, is that part of the process of setting up this hub? Was that really listening to those employees and you know, them saying, look, we you know, retired and perhaps living in Melbourne or Sydney, uh, we want to up here. Uh, certainly we've seen a number of our own staff say to us, you know, we're Queenslanders, we want to be back home, we want to live in our home state. Um, we're very fortunate that we have scale in this part of the world. We're committed to Queensland long term, have been here, uh, as the Treasurer said, for over 170 years and continue to invest in Queensland and we will put more of our infrastructure in Queensland over time um, because it makes sense. It makes sense because there's talent, it makes sense because people want to be here. And we think that's a good balance between where we have our operations and what we can do for our people. Okay. Any other questions? You're okay? Yeah, I think that's cool. Yes. Thanks, Chris. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, just on the uh, incident yesterday afternoon in central Queensland with the toddler on the childcare bus, um, following the, the similar incident in Cairns a few years ago, say government brought in legislation, should those changes in policies have helped? Well, I think this has been a terrible incident uh, and one that's quite shocking to all Queenslanders. And our thoughts are with uh, that young girl and her family at this time. Uh, the Queensland Police Service will be conducting an investigation, obviously, into this matter. But it is 
very difficult to understand how these sorts of incidents occur. The rule is set very simple. Whether you're running a daycare centre, whether you're running a childcare centre or a kindergarten, uh, whether you're a, a mum or dad, anyone who's got the care of children uh, has a very simple rule to follow when their children are in a vehicle. Look before you lock. That is a very simple rule uh, and I, I think for many of us we're finding it hard to understand how this incident could have occurred again. We do have to rely on the, uh, 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 the employees and the staff of daycare centres and childcare centres to uh, discharge their responsibilities and to look after those precious young children in their care. So our message is, look before you lock. We need to let the police service do their investigation at this time and we'll see where that leads. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. And we're just going to have a chat to, to the staff now if you want to come and, uh, come and join us. Thank you, guys. Thank you.